Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy AJ. I'm here with a rage. The Memphis Grizzlies. Are people sleeping on the Memphis Grizzlies? Make sure you guys hit that like button, subscribe. We're gonna break it all down. You're now tuning in the Hoops World. Hoops World. We played, and I'm gonna kill everything in front of me. So. Six seventy. We did it. I hit the streets just to get a bag. I pack, he got toe tagged. I punched the nigga for shorty. I'm John Wu with the 40. You not gang, nor the homie. Don't bother me, no, you don't know me. Gang shit, numbers only. You wasn't there, I was lonely. You wasn't there, I was lonely. Dog nice, blicky on me. I was just stacking my commas up. Head down, trying to run it up. These niggas be steady, be clocking me. Like the. Yeah, man, the Memphis Grizzlies, man. I feel like people aren't talking enough about the Memphis Grizzlies, but we're going to talk about them today, man. Um, I'm going to pull up this article. Shout out to, uh, I think it was ESPN. They put the, they basically graded the Memphis offseason. So it says here, um, Memphis had two needs that stood out above the rest. Despite repeated efforts to improve shooting issues, the Grizzlies continued to struggle on three-pointers, trading away Stephen Adams and Xavier Tillman Sr., all but eliminated a quality center to death. But they drafted Zach Eady in the first round of the 2024 NBA draft. And the Grizzlies re-signed Luke Kennard on a one-year deal, added two second-round picks who would both have valued shooting skills. Um, so combination of Luke Kennard and Eady, it looks like the Memphis Grizzlies are basically done. I mean, we look, they were given in this article, they gave them an A minus because they managed the salary cap. Um, they addressed the shooting, Luke Kennard, and then the center depth adding Zach Eady. I think Memphis had trouble with the rebounding. So now they got another uh, center that's big. Seven, was he seven, four, seven, five, something like that. Something like that. Yeah. He could rebound um, off the bench. So it's like he, they have a legit center backup center now. So the Memphis Grizzlies, bro. Um, what do you think? Uh, let me, before we get into the stats and the cap sheets and everything, but where do you place Memphis in the West, bro? Like right now, as is on this roster. So another team that mm. we've, you know, uh, that uh, once, you know, this is a team that we, you know, bring up and this is, we were, they were just at a situation where, they, you know, they were essentially making it to Western, Con they made it to the Western Conference Finals. Yeah, they so, were the best team. Oh, they were like they, a one seed, right? They, Something like that. Two they, yeah, seed, a couple they years made, ago. yeah, they made, they made it a really, they made it a really good series with, uh, they made it, yeah, they made it a really good series with, uh, with LA, you know, that yeah. was a good series throughout the, yeah. throughout the entirety, but you know, a lot of a lot of people are sleeping. You know, obviously because they just had that one. They they just obviously had this past year, yeah. and they you know obviously did not did not do too well. He's, and yeah. but it was be, you know every one of the you know John Morant was you know played five what five games or yeah. nine games suspension these John two Morant past years nine games been, everybody yeah. Desmond you know Desmond Bain or everybody's everybody was getting hurt you yeah. know everybody was going down and it was just at a point where you know you were. If anybody, you know, paying attention, you saw what some of these lineups that they were putting out and you realize that it's like, OK, you can understand why maybe they have like 20 losses. Like you'd see like 60 mm. percent of the roster is out all the time. You know what I'm and, and that's how that's how it was for like quite a bit with them. Yeah. And but now now it, people will start to understand. And I think they'll be back at a top five seed in the West. I think maybe yeah. we're, 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 I think we're hovering around the, the bottom of the bottom of there for sure. Definitely four or five, maybe, yeah. maybe six at the very worst, but I definitely see them at like four or five fully healthy. Yeah. Yeah. I think like they had a decent off season because they kept who they needed to keep. They didn't really hand out extensions because everybody like their young core is locked up. You see John Moran, Desmond, 36 mil, Sharon Jackson, 25, Marcus Smart still there. I mean, it's a, it could be a, he could be a trade piece if you know they see a slight slump in play during the season. But again, he's a good value defensive point guard. Brandon Clark's coming back again. Then you resign Luke. You got Luke for a steal. Luke for a one year on a nine year mill. He's getting nine mil for one year. That's a steal. You got Luke on in one year, so that is a big steal. And you needed to keep your shooting. Um, Zach Eady's your center depth, so it's like. This this team, I think. Oh, you got GG. GG is a really sleeper. Like I love GG. GG is one of the he's one of the best upcoming young scoring wings in the league. I could say I could say that now about GG. Like he has the potential to be one of the best scoring wings, young scoring wings in the league. So that's really really key for them. They have GG, and they're right under the cap. They're under the luxury tax, and they're under the two aprons. So perfect. You're literally right in the 
perfect spot. You, as far as cap wise, finances are in order. As far as roster wise, you could say they do lack they need more wings but let's see if gg could stay gg could be that scoring wing for them because i feel like memphis has always wanted a wing and they've always wanted a wing remember they were after mikhail bridges they're always kind of like thirsty for a scoring wing a wing wing they need wing help wing defenders so it's like now that you um you got to put put gg on the map and you got to put him on the spot see if he can develop and i think gg is capable of scoring and being that wing that they need um but what do you think, uh, outside of, I guess, wing wing help, I mean, do you think this roster is, like, legit, legit, or you just think it could be tweaked a little bit better? So we look mm-hmm. at everything. Uh, they're pretty they're pretty solid. I mean, in terms of, you know, we look at Marcus Smart, Zach Eady, they, you know, they try to fill in at that, in, at that center. We'll see how everything goes there. Yeah. Maybe end up getting to the point where they're like, okay, we need to get an actual center who's yeah. going to, is there obviously there's still Brandon Clark there, right? But yeah, you know there might they might end up getting to a point where you know and, and you don't want to necessarily put him at the center. Yeah, and, he's gonna like, probably turn into like a four like or three. You, and yeah, and we, they eventually get to a point where like you know what, maybe we have to get an for real five, mm. like for real five. Yeah, like 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 you know somebody that can really stretch out the floor. Obviously, you you know you have Jaron Jackson, uh, but you know he's not gonna be playing the five for you and. He's more, yeah, JJJ is, he could, like, if you want to go small ball five, I guess you could, but JJJ's always screamed, like, a solid power forward to me. You know what I'm saying? And they put him at center. I guess this is why they drafted Zach. They put him at center, and it's just not his natural position to me. He could do it, though. He could do it against certain centers, but you could just tell that he's more of, like, a power forward. Like, that's just kind of, like, his natural position. Instead of playing yeah, but definitely kinda... look out for you know, like you mentioned, the wing help for sure. You know, we, they're, yeah. they're 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 definitely in need of some of that. But Gigi Jackson could look you know look at him yeah. too. Uh, you know, Laravia is gonna Laravia is gonna get time maybe, yeah. but nothing yeah. that that's that's nothing great, obviously, right there. And you just kind of have you just kind of have Bane. Yeah, you know, you know, nothing really, nothing really too crazy there. You they might want to go out, you know, go out and get a guy like Cam Johnson or Cam Johnson, like that, Dorian, help. yeah. Yeah, I, like I said, I think Dorian could be a great help on this team. Um, yeah, they could use somebody like that, really, just somebody who can be a three for them and just have the ability to score and play defense, or just at yeah. least the ability to score, you yeah. know, or, and and get and get your bucket out uh, outside. Because obviously there was Dylan Brooks there before this past year, but I mean, it's Dylan Brooks. <laughs> yeah. Like Dorian, Benny Smith, like I said, this is probably Grizzlies fans are probably going to watch this and be like, okay, if you guys are a top five in the West, you probably won't mean to make any sudden moves, right? But if you want to take that next leap, you could think about moving Marcus or a couple of pieces, not Marcus, but somebody who you don't really value or a young guy to get to bring to the Nets and we'll give the Nets will give Dorian Finney Smith to the Grizzlies because we talked, um, uh, about Dorian Finney Smith going to the, the Grizzlies are interested in Dorian, and I think they were interested in Dayron Sharp because they needed a center also for to boost that center depth. But Dorian Finney Smith, I think, would be perfect because you add that you got your Gigi Jackson's the scoring wing, Dorian is your three and D wing. So when there's a big wing or somebody's attacking, you can put Dorian as your primary defender on that wing, or you can guard in the he can guard fours too. Dorian's probably like a three, three and a four, he can guard the three and the four sometimes too, but. You know, he's more three and a four. He'll guard those guys. Sometimes five, because Dorian can. I've seen Dorian guard in the post, and he he can defend the the centers at times. Not crazy, but at times. Because as Nets fans, we saw Dorian guard Jokic before. We put we put Dorian the small ball five before, and he actually did good against Jokic. And I was like, what? Yeah, what he was he, he was given he was given tough tasks too. And I also yeah. had something else in my mind, like you know, with Memphis too. Like they drafted Cam Spencer, but they could end up being in the market for like another backup point guard. That's a good point. And because That's outside of John Morant, outside of obviously, you know, you have John Morant, but you're not there's not too much going on at their car at their point guard right there. Obviously, you have Marcus yeah. Smart. You could bring him off the bench, but yeah. you know, we don't I, I don't I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. It, we'll, they they could they could maybe use a backup you know point guard for sure or, or just an actual like scoring guard really that can you know yeah. run an offense a little bit but really just yeah. get a bucket too because, because that be like guys. Tyus Jones you're gonna was need so, a lot of those guys that 
can yeah. hold the ball and to get a bucket themselves on that team. Yeah, you know, because don't get me Durant wrong, Jaw's a good game. point guard, but I think what made Tyus Jones so like really good on this team is because Jaw is more. Would you say Jaw's a natural two? He's a natural two because like putting Tyus at that one sometimes it just looked the offense looked amazing when they had Tyus Jones. Like it didn't miss a beat. Remember when that year when Jaw was out and they had Tyus going and it was they were better without Jaw. <laughs> Beat us, bro. So a playmaking point guard could be another option for the Memphis Grizzlies, like a real true playmaking point guard. Um, not saying Jock ja can't for do sure. it, because Jock ja could be a point guard, but some it could be helpful. Like like Rage was saying, another out another um a point guard could help. Um, yeah, like you can use yeah. a score, but definitely like you know, you're gonna need some playmaking too. Yeah, like you're you're but, you're, you're yeah. like you're gonna need a, you're gonna need a score a little bit, but when yeah. it comes down when it comes down to it, there's just outside I, what are you really getting out of your playmaking? You know, yeah, and at, at a guard. Um, I think like to wrap this up, I really think Memphis is going to be really good this year. I think Jaw's going to be on a mission. I think Zach's going to provide some really good um rebounding and buckets, some just size that they needed outside of JJJ. Um, you got Luke Kennard, so he's going to be your shooter, and then we'll got to see if Gigi can take that leap. If Gigi takes a leap, Memphis could. I could Memphis could be in the running for a big contender if Gigi takes a leap. And they just be on all cylinders. Everybody's running on all cylinders. So let us know in the comments. Swing that they so desperately need. Yeah, that swing they desperately needed is Gigi's leap. Make sure you hit that comment section. Let us know if you're a Memphis Grizzlies fan. What do you think about this offseason? Do you guys think you're a top five team? Do you guys think you have the, the good roster? You don't have to make any moves. Let us know in the comments what you guys think. Um, make sure you guys hit that like button, subscribe, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Hoops Bro Zero. We'll be back. Appreciate you guys so much.